we had a request for part two of the same exam we were just looking at. Fall 21, test three, part two. This looks like a spider web starting in the middle and going out on branches. And let's do this one first. Straight up. Alkene, water, sulfuric acid. That's called acid catalyzed hydration. The major will be the Markovnikov. So let's get our skeleton copied a bunch of times. I don't want to redraw the skeleton a hundred times. So I'm going to draw it one time. A little big. There we go. It's going to go in all the boxes except for the oxymercuration. Sorry, not the oxymercuration. The uh, ozone, but I don't see ozone. You see ozone? Not here. Sorry, I'm just talking out loud. Reagents, no. Reagents, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, we got all the skeletons ready. One more. One more. Oh, wow. I got pens flying around down here. Okay, more substituted is in the middle, less substituted here. What goes on the more substituted carbon in acid catalyzed hydration? OH. And the less substituted gets an H, but I, I could draw it, but I, you don't need to show that H. You don't need that. There you go. And in this one, the OH goes on the minor. That's minor. I hope it says minor up there. Minor, yeah. OH there, and you don't have to show it. I'll show it just for temporary purposes. There's a new H there. Don't need it. It's good. It's very much like the uh, HCl reaction, which I don't see here. If I did, I'd put Cl uh, where the OH was. What about BH3? Hmm. Notice that's BH3 all by itself, not, not with the oxidation chemical. This is just hydroboration. And I like splitting up hydroboration. I always do it. I don't think there's an exception. And then that's always followed by oxidation in some way. In this case, I'm looking for the chemicals for oxidation. Okay. So what's more electronegative, hydrogen or boron? Hydrogen goes on the more substituted carbon. At the same time, the boron goes on the less substituted carbon. What's on that boron? Yeah, two R groups. Now, ladies and gentlemen, If you circle this and tell me that the R, then I'm very happy. That way I know you're telling me there's three R groups on there and you're telling me what one of them looks like. I need to see the two wedges. You could have put two dashes, you know that, right? Because that's a sin addition. Yes. So always all the R's are going to be the same. After hydroboration, you're going to get three identical R groups. Yeah. In reality, in reality, uh, one happens at a time, and you use three moles of alkene for one mole of BH3. That's how the stoichiometry works. And then the next step, I want to oxidize this and put an alcohol on carbon two. Look, alcohol on two. Even though we haven't done this kind of nomenclature yet. I don't think I'm losing people when it says two all, and I'm telling you there's an alcohol on two. I don't think that's too much of a jump into our future, is it? Okay. And you're looking at it. Well, I know in the next step, the BR, B with R groups gets replaced with OH. Those are alcohols. 
And it looks like it's always on carbon two. And these are just enantiomers, right? Two S enantiomer is R, three R enantiomer is S. So it'd be wedge wedge and dash dash would be the two products. You don't have to show me two products. As long as one of them has the right stereoselectivity and regioselectivity, I am happy. And then what are the chemicals that allow the oxidation to happen? They're always the same. Yes, OH minus is important. H2O2, equally important. Need those two chemicals. So that is hydroboration followed by oxidation. Next one's oxymercuration, isn't it? Mercuration. Which one's more electronegative, oxygen or mercury? Oxygen and mercury. Now in this one, there was a triangle and then a backside attack. So I need, uh, you only got one point for doing it this way. One point out of two. I need wedge dash combination. Yes. Either one, you can go wedge OH dash OH, but just make sure the other bond's the opposite. Yeah, this one's got triangle followed by backside attack. Give that result. And yeah, it looks like when I'm done, I want just the methyl on carbon three and the OH on carbon three. No mercury in this name. No surprise, this step's called demercuration, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the one where students forget how many H's go on the boron. Well, Na is a spectator that's plus. I need boron to have as many H's as it takes to be minus one. That's four. If it's three, the charge is zero. If it's two, the charge is plus one. I don't want a plus one. I already got a plus one, Na. So BH4. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I have a D, I need to see the D. I do not want to see the H because the new thing is the D. Chemically, it's identical, but it's got a mass of two, and that can be measured in labs. So it's, it's D. So, yeah. And this one, uh, when we use D or T, I need to see them in the product, and it looks like only a T showed up here. There's no, there's no Ds in this question. So when we get to tritium and platinum, we'll, we'll figure that out. And now I'm going down here to here. Oh, ethanol. That's a two carbon aldehyde. If I draw it nice, you guys will see what I'm trying to say. And butanone. Yeah. You see how I drew that? Like there was a double bond to start with, like up here, and I cut it in half. That's the ozone reaction, right? So what do you need to know? You need to know the formula of ozone, and you need to know it's two steps. Ozone is the first step. Uh, you need an excess when there's more than one pi bond. So in this case, I wouldn't mark it wrong if you put excess, but you don't need excess when there's only one pi. And two, there's a clue that you need two methyls on a sulfur. The oxide is the third O of ozone. Okay. Dimethyl sulfide is the chemical that becomes, dimethyl sulfide becomes dimethyl sulfoxide. You don't need to do this on the test. But there's your third O from ozone. All O's accounted for. All three O's accounted for. Two from the alkene that reacted. And the third one ended up on the sulfur. And there you go. So we got to know the combination there and what they do.
Now down here, if you had this box, I expect you to be able to do that from what you learned directly in chapter six. That's called a vicinal halo hydrant, isn't it? What two chemicals are needed to make vicinal halo hydrants? Well, you need a halogen and it needs to be dissolved in water. I'm gonna draw water a little different. H O H. And what are the two new things you got on your thing? Well, let's just let's just be. I didn't change a thing here. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be a good teacher. I just want to show you the two new groups that ended up on your molecule right there. You see it? Those are the two new groups. Oops. Ah, get rid of the pink. Now, green highlighter. I want a Cl and an OCH3. H attached to something. Cl attached to Cl. That part was the same. Oh, that's not a highlighter. Yeah, Cl. What has to be attached to the H? Yeah, you nailed it. And what I didn't tell you, and I'm telling you now, any reaction where you saw water as a reactant and alcohol can generally do the same reaction and the mechanism's identical. Doesn't an alcohol have the same lone pairs as water? Don't they both have an O bonded to an H that can be removed? Uh, if it's like an oxonium situation in the intermediate, which there would be strong acid, take the H off and, you're, and you end up with these things. So instead of a vicinal halohydrin, we got a vicinal. In fact, this was a, a clue on a, another exam. It said, hint, vicinal halo ether. Why did I give that hint this time? Because I drew the halo ether. You had to predict the vicinal halo ether on that test. That was a box, and this was given. That's very common. So, yeah. So I could have replaced water here with like an alcohol. Do you wanna see what happens there? I mean, I'm trying to make this as good a study guide as possible. How about using H G O A C twice and isopropanol and pretend there's a box right here. Once again, skeleton. You're going to put oxymercuration again, but this is not going to be an alcohol, is it? H G O A C. What ends up on the wedge instead of OH? Not OCH3 either. Yeah, when it was OCH3, HOCH3 ended up as OCH3, yeah. HO isopropyl ends up as O isopropyl. Same kind of analogy, right? More highlighters? You get the green highlighter and the purple or pink? I don't know. Look at these two and then generalize to these two a little later. So, can you do the mercuration on the top one? Uh, only do demercuration when there's mercury. Okay, you want to do that? Sorry. I was putting together what you just said. Uh, you, you could have a question where I ask you what chemical, making this uh, more rounded. And now it's not even chiral anymore. 
So what chemical would let me do that? Don't put any BD4, put any BH4. Yeah. Any BH4. That's your demercuration chemical. Okay, uh, not quite done. We got the old OSO4 followed by the tert butyl hydrogen peroxide. What groups do you get on your alkene this time? The alcohols, plural. It's called a vicinal diol, and they go at the same time. So we get OH, OH. No triangle here. That's a vicinal diol. That's also known as a glycol. Yeah, glycol. Got glycol in my radiator right now. Antifreeze. Yeah. One more to go. T2PT. Well, T does the same thing as H. You got to remember this is one of the thin ones. So if there were H's, you'd put H's on thin. But they're not H's. And the reason is this other carbon over here, if it was an H, I'd have two H's and I wouldn't be able to tell thin or anti. But they're not H, they're T. And they went at the same time. And that's all you're responsible for was a hydrogen platinum reaction. This is the same as the hydrogen platinum reaction, except I'm using tritium instead of hydrogen. Thin. We got a question. Same story. You put, if it was D2 and PT was the question, you put two Ds on there. Still thin, same mechanism. There you go. So we're going to do the next part of part two on our next video.